Hey guys, this is uh, Sean Gross here. I appreciate you watching my channel. I am getting ready to do the third year of maintenance on my Mercury Verado. This is the L6 300. So it's a supercharged 2.6 liter inline six. And it's on my 1984 Grady White Seafarer. It's winter, uh, so I got the heater on here in the garage and it's December. I think I have about 275 hours on this motor at this point. I'm gonna do what's called a 300 hour service. Uh, the only thing I don't have is the accessory belt, which I will pick up one of those and replace that in the spring. But uh, been a fantastic motor, uh, pushes this 22 foot Seafair along really well. Uh, actually uh, cruise 28 to 32 miles per hour about 2.74 miles per gallon I run uh, Mercury Mercury vessel view uh, suite on it with the uh, electrical uh, digital binnacle so it's all digital controls with power steering as well just a, a really fantastic combination on this boat with the uh, bracket on as well I'm running a Rev 4 prop this is a 17 pitch four blade so this is a revolution tickled with that gives good uh, lift in the stern but also uh, has good bite so the first thing we're gonna end up doing is taking the cowlings off the top uh, the back and then the chaps um, we want to pull all the bolts you can see I've actually started to pull some of these and there's a couple plastic clips that hold the chaps together here in the front so you want to remove these clips and take out all of these bolts that are holding the chaps on a 5 16 uh, driver will uh, allow you to take these out so you can just unscrew them again really uh, super sweet motor it's smooth it's quiet I actually uh, you can see I have downriggers on my boat I troll with this motor I don't have a kicker uh, I can get this thing down to 1.8 miles per hour uh, throw some uh, bags or buckets over the side and I can actually slow her down a little more than that super quiet though man just love this motor all right Let's get to work. All right, this top, there's a latch. Lift that, pull up, disengage it, comes right off. To remove this back cowling, it's a lever right there. Then this thing kind of slides back. Again, flex it out a little bit to get it around the motor. That pulls up. So now we have the cowling off the top. Take the chap off. Set it in a safe place. You want to do the same for the other side. All right, so now you can see the motor with the chaps removed and the cowlings removed. All right, so what are some things we're going to do? Well, this uh, fuel filter here, we're going to replace. I purchased a new inline fuel filter. Uh, I have a new Ver Mercury Verado oil filter. So this is the engine oil filter. I'm going to replace the spark plugs, which super easy to get at these spark plugs. Um, for winter maintenance, what you do is pull these coils off uh, pull the plugs out and then I spray some uh, it's almost like a fogging oil into each of the cylinders and then uh, cycle the key to kind of uh, distribute the oil and then put it all back together but now I'm gonna end up taking all of these uh, coils off you can see uh, there's just one bolt uh, pull them then pull the actual plugs out um, and then I'll put the new plugs in so uh, here are my new plugs 
And then I did purchase a water pump kit. I wasn't sure what I was going to run into. I've never done the water pump before. Um, and I know, you know, the big thing is the impeller. But I didn't want to get into it and find out that the housing was worn or not have, uh, you know, something that I needed, a gasket. Uh, so I bought this entire kit. Now, a little bit pricey, but I just figured when I'm in there, I want to get it done. Got my gear lube oil uh, for the lower unit. And I'm running 2540, the synthetic blend four stroke oil from Mercury. So we're going to have to pull the prop. We're going to end up pulling the uh, oil out of the lower unit. And then we need to remove uh, the lower unit, pull it out uh, to access the water uh, pump, which I believe is right in here somewhere. Here's actually a nice little maintenance uh, schedule for you. So, you know, I'm at basically 300 hours. So spark plugs, water pump, and it says the accessory drive belt. I didn't reckon, when I looked in the manual, I think it said uh, inspect. I don't think it said replace. And based on what I'm seeing with the drive belt, it says replace belt when the arrow indicator, that indicator is in the red and it's not. But uh, you know what, I'm gonna buy the belt and probably run the boat a little bit in the spring and then replace it. And you know, this belt will probably still be good so I'll keep it as a, a spare uh, on board just in case. I also need to clean the air filter. So this air filter, you pull this off of here, remove that, um, and then uh, you can pull this out and clean it. It's a cleanable element. You can see I got a couple little bugs on it, but it doesn't get too dirty out there. Hey, so I, uh, I purchased uh, last year one of these prop wrenches. I wanted one to keep on the boat. Uh, this is a lightweight, it's plastic, so uh, it's something to keep in mind. But uh, I used it actually last year to uh, take the prop nut off. Uh, so this is the prop wrench uh, used for the nut. Uh, this is an inch and a sixteenth, uh, which fits on the uh, nut that's on the prop there. I also uh, last year purchased one of these nut and tab washer kits. Uh, just in case I ever have a thread that's an issue on one of these or feel I need to replace it, I just want, didn't want to be without it. So I keep this on the boat as well, uh, just in case I need it. All right, so... Uh, because with the, the kit, you actually have to take the tabs and bend them down uh, so that uh, you can get the nut to spin. So I'm going to get a rag. I'm going to wipe in there a little bit. trying to do is lock this in there tab washer oh, so we'll end up putting lots of grease back on that and so I'm going to need to pull that and that to drain the lower unit oil so we will put the motor <coughs> vertical we'll put a container on there that under that and we will pull those out so that we can get the lower unit oil out pull that off there
the engine oil is drained with this bolt right here that drain plug essentially so they do sell a little plastic thing that will allow, allow you to let that drip down I just tend to uh, put a bucket under it or a little bin and catch that oil so it's always a good idea to inspect the propeller when you have it off take a look at uh, everything that you can't normally see one of the other things I purchased with this kit are the seals uh, so when you take a plug out uh, they recommend to not reuse the little uh, plastic seal that goes underneath it. it's like a little washer uh, they recommend that you purchase new so I purchased some new ones of those as well so one of the things I do um, because I just changed oil annually essentially um, I like to send the oil out for oil analysis so uh, Blackstone oil analysis they will send you these uh, pre-labeled uh, containers send it in I think it's like 25 bucks or something like that but gives me a good report on what's going on with the motor um, so we're gonna let this drain uh, let the lower unit and the engine oil drain out and then we'll pull the uh, uh, filter off over here on the other side so this thing just unscrews I don't know if I can do it but yep I can so we'll pull that off uh, that should be drained out of there and then we can put a new one on see that comes off pretty easily so we'll put our new filter on and I'm probably gonna let this drain overnight that way I get a good oil drain on it um, I'll put the new oil filter on right now but I'm not going to replace any of the oils until I've pulled the lower unit off all right so uh, 8 millimeter or 5 16 and you can remove these uh, bolts that hold in the coils these uh, right here you just pull push down and pull and then you can pull these off of there always good to inspect them make sure you're not seeing anything wonky and up in there is the spark plug so we want to take all of these off all six of them so now we're going to pull each of the plugs and then I'm going to check uh, my new plugs for, for gap. So I'll use some feeler gauges, make sure that my gap is correct on those. Um, you can see the coils over there. Uh, and take a look at the old plugs and make sure I don't see anything wonky with them. Just uh, always good to inspect. So I said, as you're already here, I'm always looking for you know any wires that might be showing signs of uh, having some wear or cracking you know making sure I'm not seeing anything that looks out of place or stressed two other products that I've purchased that I've used uh, since I have installed this new motor uh, this corrosion guard I like to spray um, corrosion guard on different metal exposed metal pieces I know they do have protective coating on them mercury does a great job with uh, anti-corrosion stuff um, but still I like to just get in there and spray some of the fasteners and then this is the storage seal uh, fogging oil so I will spray uh, some of this into each of the cylinders and as I said I will uh, cycle the motor uh, with uh, the spark plugs out uh, just hit the starter real quick to wash the cylinder walls with that storage seal Now, with uh, all of the plugs out, uh, the storage seal, you don't want to put a ton of it in there. Um, you know, I put a couple seconds of spray per cylinder. Uh, normally what I do, uh, right now I still have the lower unit and oil draining out, but as I lift 
the motor up a little bit. That way I get it down in there and I'm not spraying at such a weird angle. Uh, you know, I'm trying to spray this way. I want to spray more down into the cylinder. And then I'll let the, that kind of sit. And then I'll cycle the key to just kind of cycle the uh, storage seal uh, along the cylinder. The inline fuel filter, what you do is you press on the red and pull it apart. I have a little rag in there to keep the fuel from going down. We change the fuel filter. Again, you always want to pay attention to this orientation. Uh, the arrow shows you the direction of flow coming out, going up into the manifold. Uh, it's easy to reverse that. All right, so uh, engine oil fill is in the back here. So this is where we're going to open up and fill it. Uh, this cover comes off to get you access to the accessory drive belt. I've already uh, pulled it off the grommets, but basically you can see these grommets right here uh, grab onto these studs. Now you want to be careful. I actually lost one one time because uh, I think I pulled it off and I didn't realize that the grommet came free from the plastic cover. Uh, so I had to purchase a new one. So here's the top of the Verado. And you can see the accessory drive belt here. I'll have to use this to torque this out. Um, and then uh, that'll give me some slack on the belt and I can remove the belt. So as I said, I don't have the belt right now, but uh, looks like a fairly easy change on here. All right, so we've removed the rubber cap here. Uh, we're going to use a half inch <coughs> socket. Get in on this uh, bolt that's here. And this holds the sacrificial element on the bottom here. It gives us access to another bolt or nut that holds the lower unit on. All right, so it looks like it's a 9 sixteenths uh, that's underneath here that needs to come off. And then, as I said, <clears throat> we have the three-quarter inch nuts that are here and here. So you do want to make sure that your uh, binnacle and the motor are in neutral. So the kit I purchased <clears throat> contains the housing. Uh, you can see this uh, uh, seal system here, the plate and seal kit, this other seal here, and the impeller. So I'll begin by removing the bolts, pulling this housing up, and taking a look at the impeller, pulling that out of it. So 10 millimeter. Remove this housing. I also cleaned up the shaft a bit. That way we can slide it off. Okay, so uh, I put a little bit of WD-40 on the shaft here in order to get that seal off. And then this whole system is going to come up. And you can see the sealing system there. So we'll and here you can see the impeller inside the housing. Housing looks good. I don't see anything going on with it, so I don't know that I need to replace anything in that with the housing, so I may just keep all these things for another day and keep for the next time. Um, but the seals all look good. You want to be mindful of this keyway right here. Uh, the key uh, needs to line up on the impeller. So sometimes what people can do is they'll use some grease to hold this in place. Uh, I am gonna lift this uh, 
pack up here, pull this out. Just take a look at everything down below. Again, my uh, lower unit oil looked fantastic, so I don't think I'm gonna dive any deeper. Uh, don't need to put this seal system in place, but we'll start rebuilding. So, tighten down the 10 millimeter, work your way around, make sure we're good and torqued. And we're going to put some grease and lubricate this shaft and slide the collar seal back down over top of it. So when reinstalling, you want to make sure that you get everything lined back up. I'm going to take and just wipe out some things here and make sure clean up these threads, um, grease up everything really well, get it ready to accept the lower unit. on this to uh, assist it with uh, going in there. Things looking good there. Lower unit is completely drained. Engine oil is completely drained. Uh, now we're going to work on the spark plugs and putting in the storage seal. So we'll do that. Again, I'm just going to spray uh, a little shot of this in each cylinder. When reinstalling the spark plugs or putting new ones in, I put some anisease compound on the threads. Make sure you don't get any out on the tip of the actual spark plug. Keep that area clean. And torque to 20 foot-pounds. Then we will place the pencil, co pencil coils back on and those get 71 inch pounds for torque. Uh, again, you don't want to over tighten these. Uh, there is a threaded insert that's injection molded into this plastic and if you over tighten that, it's possible you could break it. So pay attention to your manual. It may say something different, but that's what mine says. The air filter. Loosen this, pull this out of the top remove the air filter, wash in warm soapy water, air dry with uh, compressed air. Uh, you can blow compressed air in this foam filter to dry it off and then blot it with some oil uh, to put a little bit of oil into the foam and then reinstall it by putting that back into the top and this gets tightened in when this is installed. All right, so about 7.4 quarts of this uh, four-stroke oil from Mercury. All right, the uh, last thing I'm going to do uh, until I order the uh, serpentine belt there, uh, the accessory belt, uh, last thing I'm going to do to uh, do a service on the motor here is the gear oil. And so I bought one of these uh, slip repeat uh, gear oil pumps uh, to go with the bottles. Um, I had borrowed one in the past and it seemed to work out well. It wasn't exactly this version, but uh, I'm going to give this a whirl. So the whole thing is we're going to pump in from the bottom uh, rain hole and fill it up until it comes out the, uh, the top, fill, uh, top hole. So I'm going to make sure we're a good vertical here, horizontal on the uh, lower unit so that we're getting a good accurate fill level and uh, we'll start pumping some loop into this thing. So the kit comes with some different size threaded adapters. Uh, I believe what's uh, on the actual pump is a 3816 and I think there's M8 and M10s. Uh, this is uh, the 3816 so this is going to screw right on. The nice thing is, uh, is this allows you to rotate uh, and plug it in without having to rotate the whole hose. Some of them you have to actually you know, kind of spin the whole hose and that's kind of a pain. The other thing you want to do 
is make sure you put the proper pickup tube length on it. So looking through uh, with that, I need a short one. So put that on there. So we've got our bottle of gear lube. We'll thread the uh, <coughs> threaded portion into the bottom hole. Again, you want to make sure that you are actually replacing the uh, seals uh, for this. I believe, let's see if we can get some oil flowing here. There we go. The nice thing is the oil that came out of the lower unit uh, looked like the oil going in. Now, <clears throat> I've always said that, uh, you know, the color of oil is not a great indicator of performance, right? But uh, with lower unit oil, if it's got water in it, you'll know. Engine oil, sometimes people say that black oil is uh, bad oil, but uh, I send oil out for analysis all the time and, you know, the oil is black when it leaves and, uh, you know, comes back that the oil is in great shape, still offering good lubricity, you know, not having fuel dilute or oil dilution with fuel. So, uh, you know, the color of the oil is not a great indicator. Uh, you know, if you own a diesel vehicle, you would know that because, you know, you change the oil and, you know, turn the vehicle on and turn it back off and it's already black. Um, that's the experience I have with uh, several diesel engines I own from Kubota to New Holland to Ford, um, you know, around Cummins and others and, you know, the same with boat motors. So we'll, uh, we'll say uh, this looks good, you know, putting oil in and uh, when it comes out looking that color, we'll go with it. If it was uh, contaminated with moisture, you would see a a whitish, milkyish kind of colored oil. Um, so you always want to be on the lookout for that and any metal contamination that could be uh, indicative of wear. All right, so we got oil flowing out the top. Let's put the screw in there, bolt, plug. So uh, we've got the drain plug and the fill plug, you know, for the uh, lower unit, uh, all secured and tightened down. Uh, new seals on those. Uh, now we've cleaned up the first pushing here. Let's put that on. I've got a good amount of this uh, grease that I'm using. And let's uh, let's get the prop and gently put that on. All right, now we're going to want to bend the tabs up to lock that nut on the shaft, and then this job is done. So thank you for watching my video uh, where I walk through the steps for performing maintenance, annual maintenance on the Mercury Verado L6 300. We've walked through the engine oil change process, the gear oil lube change, the impeller change for water, fuel filter change on the engine, air filter clean and reinstallation. Hopefully this helps you. Check out some of my videos and thanks for watching.